Hey, welcome back guys. So up to this point, we built out our expenses grad with uh, some of our auth endpoints. So for now, I want us to start working on the income grad. So initially, I thought I would actually use so the same expenses relation and then use that to store both expenses and income and maybe name it something generic like transactions. But what I've noticed is it's going to be easier to work with if we create a separate app to manage the income because some of the model fields will be quite different and I think it, it will still be a good way to organize the income functionality in a separate model such that it can be easily extendable. All right, so for us to start, first I want to first clear out something. So here on our ex expense details API view, we are still keeping the perform create. We don't need that. We only need the query set and then the lookup field. Okay, so make sure you clear that one out. So once we have that, now we need to create a separate app to manage the income. So it's gonna look a lot similar to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to duplicate this. You can actually create a separate app, but I want, what I want to do is copy it and then duplicate it by pasting it. So I can actually do it here first, then I'll move it in the, in the root. So up to here, it should do, no, not in authentication. All right, so I'm going to rename it to income and then I'm gonna go inside and edit a lot of stuff. So we are gonna start from the views. So right here, this is gonna be income serializer. Like I mentioned, it's gonna be a lot similar. So this is gonna be income serializer. And now when we go to the serializers.py, we should be here. Just rename this one real quick. So if you got the model, this should be income. So let's go to the model and actually create that one real quick. So in models.py, this should be income. So what's gonna change here will be the category sources. So in this case, we are gonna have the sources. So this will be the source of income. So users can know which streams that they are bringing in more money than others. So this now will change to source incomes. And then I want to change the key category to represent source. All right, so in here, now I want to have some source options. So one will be salary, let's see. The second one will be business. Then I'm gonna have another one to represent like side hustle, side hustles. All right, I'll keep one for the others, but feel free to add more here, just so you can provide the user with more options. All right, so once we have this, now we are gonna keep the source of course, we are gonna keep the amount, the description is okay, the owner, the date, so it will be a lot similar, so we'll keep all those. So now, once we are done there, in the permissions, we are gonna keep the is owner, cause we want to use it to, on our details view. So if we come back to the views.py, let's check what's complaining. So this should be importing income. All right, so let me rename this. Whatever we have expense, it should be income, it's capital I, the others should be small letters. All right, so we are gonna keep the ID too. Okay, so looking good. So now we need to write this up in our settings.py. So right here, settings.py, we want to bring in this new app. So if we go to here, I'm gonna duplicate this, then we can keep income. All right, so once we have that, we need to go to our urls.py, which should be here. So we need to rename this. This should be views.income list. Then this should be views.income detail API view. Then let's rename this to income. So I'm actually going to keep this to be incomes, then this can be income. Not sure if incomes is the correct grammar or it's correct English, but really it doesn't matter. So once we have this, we need to put it in our main app routing file, which is urls.py here. So I'm gonna have quite the same thing. This goes to income. Okay, looking good, looking good. So now, if we go to our model, which is here, you can see that for all these models, we don't have a dunder str method. So 
First of all, I want to add a class meter to all these such that we can have some additional definitions here. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to define an ordering. So ordering. So here with ordering, we can define how we want our results to be ordered. So first, we are go I'm going to want them to be ordered by date and then descending order. So I'm going to do minus date. All right, so once we have this, now we need to define it under str method. So right here, define str. So this can be useful when you're like debugging or you're trying to log an instance. So now we want to return, let's say self dot, yeah, so we can return description. Oh, so since description can be blank or null, it's good. it can be good we return, let's say, let's return the owner. The owner so since owner is an instance we are going to need to look at its string representation which will use which will run the under str method in in the user's model which i will get there to check if it's actually set up correctly then i'm going to just concatenate there like then i add expense income okay so that should do so if we if we first take a look at the uh, authentication then models.py which is here, you can see that we have the str, which returns the email. So now this will do something like John does at gmail.com's income, something like that. So I'm gonna have the same thing for expenses. Like I said, this can come in handy when you're trying to like debug or you're trying to, to like in the admin, you're trying to look at these instances. So right here in the models.py, I'm going to bring this one in. All right, so that should do. So we need to run our migration to take care of our, our model. So here in our terminal, I'm actually going to stop this, then I'm going to try to run the migration. So Python manage.py make migrations. Yeah, so this should be income. Okay, let's run the migration. It updates these two. We have our income. So let's migrate and see. Migrate. Okay, so looking good. So once we have this, now if we run back the server, And come back here and reload. Oh, so we have an issue. So let's take a look at the log. Improperly configured field category is not a varied. Oh yeah. So if we go to our serializers, which is here, you can see that we don't have a category, but rather we have a source. All right, so update that, then reload. And now you can see that the documentation comes through and we have the income being listed. So it has the pagination. Yeah, so it has almost everything we had built out from the expenses model. So looking good, looking good. So once we have those, I want to add the ID in here just so we can provide the front end with, with the way that they can uniquely identify these expenses. For example, now if I come in here and I try to like list these expenses, so let's say I come over here, let me log in real quick. Can put bearer, bearer, then the token, authorize. So let's try again, gate one. Hmm. Yeah, so one is not found. So let's get all of them. So here, click gate, try it out, page one, click execute. And now you can see we get the results, but in the results, you see we don't get an ID. And an ID would be like very helpful on the front end if we want to like uniquely identify these results. So right here, I'm going to add it to both of these. So ID, then I'm going to have the same thing for, for income and expenses. So even here, I'm going to bring in ID. All right, so let's try again. And now you can start to get the ID, good. So right now, if we try to go to like one of these, 
So let's say we go to one of these. First, if we click this, let's try one like ID2. So if we try to go to like ID2, so like here, get one unique ID, so ID2, then execute. You can see that we get the ID. So if when we, right now when we try to go to like edit, let's say we are editing this, you will be able to see that the ID is not actually editable, which is good. Okay, so once we have this, we basically can say that we have our income model set up. We can come in here. Now, if we want to create stuff, let's say we want to create, like record some new money we got, execute. See, it gets created. We have the ID coming through. So it works quite like similar to, to what we already know, what we already have. So you can view the detail. Yeah, looking good. So let's try editing it. Let's say we want to edit one thing. So by the way, guys, you see we have the puts and the patch. Basically, all of these do quite the same thing. They all do the updating of, of the data of a specific of a specific item, but they are always con con it's always conventional to use one over the other depending on the situation. So if we ever wanted to change like one attribute in the in the one attribute or one value of an attribute in an in an item, it's always good to use the patch. So if we wanted to let's say change the like the the amount here to something like let's say we we knew beforehand that we want to change one thing let's say we want to change the amount something like 100 and then yeah so something like 100 and we knew beforehand that we wanted to change one so it's always ideal we, we use a patch so you can see that that's the job so if we wanted to do like updating many let's say we want to update many fields for example we want to update like the amount let's say we want it to go to 2000 then we want the description to be this is such and maybe we want to change the date also yeah so in this kind of, of case it's always good that we we use the the put all right so oh let's look at our json here okay so this shouldn't have this okay execute so yeah, so you can see that all everything is working. Everything is working with the with the income crud and the like. So if we we reiterate, we can see that we have a model which is one, and then when it comes to the serializer, here we basically define a model serializer and define the model and the attributes we want, the fields we want to be visible to the front end, to the view actually. So once we have those here in permissions. You can see we create a custom permission to make sure that when it comes to the details view, which is here, when it comes to the details view, only the user who created this can have access to this. So that is defined right here. Okay, so if this is the first video you find, I recommend you check out the previous ones because we went in we went in deep to talk about how to create these and what these methods actually mean. But if you made it this far, then that's really good. So I'll be pausing the video here. If it helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing the channel and then I'll see you in the next video. Bye.